Let's take a look at how we can use Excel to value a call option with the Black-Scholes option pricing model. And perhaps more importantly, to show you how changes in the variables affect the price of a put and a call option. So the value of a call from the Black-Scholes option pricing model is actually quite difficult to derive. But it's actually very easy to compute in Excel. So if you look here, the value of the call equals the stock price times N of D1, and I'll explain that in a second, minus K, which is the exercise price, times E to the minus RT. E to the minus RT is just the continuous time present value factor, and then we're multiplying by N of D2. So you're taking the present value of the exercise price, and then you're adjusting it by this N of D2. Now, where does D1 and D2 come from? It comes from these two equations. D1 is equal to the natural log of the stock price over the exercise price, plus, open parenthesis, risk, the risk-free rate, plus the variance of the stock's returns, divided by 2, close parenthesis, times the time until the option expires. And this is in fractions of a year. So you have to convert the number of days until the option expires into um, the fraction of a year. So if it was 182 days, that would be about half a year. And then D2 equals D1 minus sigma square root of t. And I forgot, there's sigma square root of t in the denominator of this equation. And the reason you get these two different numbers is that you're solving a quadratic and if you remember from algebra class, that quadratic formula gave you two solutions to the uh, problem. To value the put, we don't have a Black-Scholes put pricing formula, but we can value it using what's called put-call parity. And put-call parity basically says that, well, we set up this um, payoff matrix with a call the present value, the exercise price, the stock price, and the put value. And the put has to equal a certain value for there not to be an arbitrage opportunity. So you may recall an arbitrage opportunity is the case where you can earn a risk-free profit, but use none of your own money. So here the put equals the call plus the present value, the exercise price, minus the stock price. So I have an example over here. The stock price is 55, the exercise price is 60, the risk-free rate is 6%, the time until expiration is 220 days, but here I divided it by 365 to get 0 0.6027, and the, the uh, standard deviation of the stock's returns is 31.62%. So the best way to do this Okay, I've given this as an assignment to students, and oftentimes they try and do everything in one line. But the best way to do it is to do separate pieces of it, because if you have one long equation here in Excel, it's very hard to find a mistake where you put the parentheses in the wrong place or something like that. It's much easier if you do one piece at a time. So here I have the natural log of S over K, um, this part in this parentheses here. I have sigma times the square root of t, which is in the denominator here, and we'll use it here as well. And then we can calculate all of this um, quite easily. So let me show you the formulas. So here, I'm just using the ln function, and in Excel you have to start with an equal sign to get the um, function to work. LN is natural log of B1 over B2, so stock price over exercise price, and then R plus sigma squared divided by 2 times T right here is going to be B3, which is the risk-free rate, plus B5. I gave you the standard deviation, so you need to... Um, square it in order to get the variance and divide it by 2, and then I multiply by B4, which is T. And then sigma square root of T is B5, which is sigma, times
times the square root of b4, etc. Okay, and down here, once I calculate d1 and d2, so once I've calculated these, I can figure out d1 and d2. It's just this plus this divided by um, this right here. I have to figure out this this um, nd1 and nd2. So let me go back to the my information here. nd1 and nd2 have to do with this normal distribution. And you've done it in stats class, and you've probably looked up the numbers in the table in the back of a book, where this is a standard normal distribution with mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. So remember that the normal distribution is symmetric, and it's also a probability distribution. So the area under the curve, the total area, should add up to 1 or 100%. Because it's symmetric, half the values lie to the left of the mean, half the values lie to the right of the mean. So let's say we had, they use x here instead of d1 and d2. Let's say x was equal to the mean here, right here. Then the area under the curve would be 50%. Here it's more than the mean, so this area is going to be greater than 50%. Now, you used to look it up in a table in the book, in the back of your stats book, but you don't have to do that because Excel has a function that does that for us. So let's go back to our formulas here, and it's norm s dist b10. So it's saying find this normal standard distribution for b10 and find it for, and b10 is d1, and also find it for d2. We also calculated this present value factor, exponential of minus b3, b3 is r, times t. And then so the call option is going to be b1 times b12, b1 is the stock price, minus b2 times b15, this present value, the exercise price, times b13. And then the put value is going to be what the call option value which is in b16 plus b2 we said plus the exercise price times that present value factor minus the value of the stock so the formulas i put in before so that's all we've done is translated these into um, cells and the nice thing about doing it this way is we can get a better understanding of how the variables, uh, how changing the variables affect the value of the put and the call. Let's say the stock price goes up to 60. Let's see what happens. The value of the call goes up, the value of the put goes down, right? Because the call option allows you to buy at the exercise price regardless of what the stock price is. So a higher stock price, um, and that's the current stock price, that's not the future stock price, is going to be good for the call option. But it's bad for the put option because the put option is a case where you sell at the exercise price. And a higher stock price means it's less likely that this put option will finish in the money. Let's go back to our previous numbers, 55, so we have 420 and 7707. Let's see what happens if we change the exercise price. So let's change the exercise price to, oh, we'll make that 55. Actually, let's make it uh, 50. What happens? Lower exercise price. The exercise price is the price you can buy the stock for from the call option. That makes it much more valuable, right? Being able to buy at 55 is much better than being able to buy at 60, but the exercise price is the sell price for the put option. So that means you can sell it at a lower price, uh, and so that's not as good, right? Being able to sell it at the higher price is better. So again, let's go back to our, our previous numbers here and see how things change. What about the risk-free rate? Okay, not as obvious 
here, how that changes. So let's, uh, let's increase the risk-free rate to 8%. What happens? The value of the, let's see, well, let's go back to, let me go back to 6%. Let's see, this is 420 and this is 707. If we increase the risk-free rate to 8%, the value of the call goes up, the value of the put goes down. Okay, so we get some understanding of what's going on here. How about if we change the days until the option expires? So we'll go back to our original example. Let's make it uh, shorter. Let's make it 90 days. What do we expect? Well, if the contract expires in 90 days instead of 220, we would think that the value of both the put and the call go down, right? You don't have the right but not the obligation to buy the stock in the case of, of the call or to sell the stock in the case of a put. So lowering that should uh, reduce the value of the put and the call. Let's see what happens. Sure enough, it does. It reduces the value of the call and the put. Okay, then we'll go back to our original example. And what else do we have here? Sigma, standard deviation. Normally, we don't like standard deviation of returns. We don't like a lot of risk. We don't like a lot of fluctuation. But an option's different. We want the option to finish in the money. That is, if it's a call option, we want the stock price to exceed the exercise price. If it's a put option, we want the stock price to be below the exercise price. So volatility is good because if it finishes out of the money, you just throw it away. Okay, um, a great example I saw in a textbook years ago of a, of a call option is like a rain check in the store. All right, you go in, you want to buy something, you want to buy that flat screen TV, you know, it's normally $2,000, they have it on sale for 1200 bucks. they don't have any in stock, they say, look, here's a rain check, they give you a little stub or something. And they say, come back on Tuesday, we'll have more in stock, you can buy it for $1,200. So you're driving home, right? So you have the right to buy the TV at $1,200, but not the obligation. You're not obligated to buy it. You're driving home, you stop at a different electronics store, and they have that same TV, and they have it in stock, and it's selling for $1,100. It's even cheaper. You know, just throw your rain check away, right? So the beauty is, is that volatility is good. Right? If the stock goes up a lot, you make a lot on the call. If it goes down, you just throw the call away and vice versa for the put. So let's see, let's increase this volatility to, I don't know, 60%. What happens? Sure enough, that increases the value of the call and the put. So you can see how these different variables affect the prices of puts and calls by setting this up in Excel, okay? And again, I, I really strongly recommend that you do this in little pieces like this. It's much easier to find the mistake. It's sort of good programming skills, right? They'll tell you if you've taken a um, some sort of computer programming class that you write little routines and you document them. So easy to see what you did. So if there's a mistake, I can see it here or here, it's much easier to find it. But more importantly, it gives us a chance to change these numbers and to see how it affects the price of the put and the call.